Hello and welcome to KSP Career Mode. Yes, we are continuing after our last orbital episode and the mission for today will be crossing the radiation belt and hopefully launching our first science satellite in or to orbit. So now let's go into the uh, science tree and check out what shall we unlock. We have 53.8 science and I really do want to unlock something meaningful. Uh, advanced rocketry, we have a couple of liquid hydrogen engines and tanks that would give us a little bit more, you know, or better launch capabilities. Because it's also the Marlin vacuum engine, which I'm assuming is a SpaceX version of Mar Merlin. And we have general construction, which would give us some container and container mounts, which is not bad. It would give us launch clamps. Uh, some adapters and these tri tricouplers should be useful when we will if we'll be doing the remote tech satellites aviation advanced flight control that might come in handy if we want advanced inline stabilizer and then survivability in terms of modules launch escape systems and parachutes and whatnot Okay, that might be useful. I mean, parachutes I find very useful, so maybe I should take that one. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna take that one. There we go. Right, that being said, let's uh, check out our... We have another orbiter candidate being made and a couple of things being researched. Let's see, do we have upgrades? Yes, we have three. Okay. That means I want to put up a little bit more into our research rate and I want to be cranking a little bit more science. Um, oh, no, better to put some in space plane hangar because I do want to start constructing planes as well. Okay, that being said, let's start making uh, the satellite. Yes, the goal for this satellite would be to basically go into permanent uh, carbon orbit and maybe, just maybe, cross the radiation belt. So we do both in the same go. Hmm, that might be handy. Okay, so we have, uh, this is a little bit time accelerated build because I figured um, it, would, it would still show a good enough building and you would get a chance to see what it's built. And you can always pause it if you're unsure what you think. So let me know if it works for you or you want me to insert more jump cuts. I will insert some to keep the tempo going rather than just, you know, stop and, you know, a lot of oohs and ah and mmm. Apparently, some of you liked it, some of you didn't. I'll try to keep a little bit uh, amount of cuts to, to a healthier level, let's hope. Let, let's say it like this. Okay, so we have a satellite here, that's the core, uh, electrics and whatnot, uh, we have the batteries, we have the squad, let's say, okay, so, yeah, right, let's put some science experiments, uh, well, will I put them, okay, scan set, we can put you on top, perhaps, science junior, oh, I need a place to be putting them. Do I have something, uh, experiment return? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We do have the Octobus. That would basically extend this uh, body to look exactly the same. I'm just gonna remove this and let's place it up downstairs. Yes. And then we place you on top. Oh, that looks better already. I'm definitely gonna take it. There. Let's put then batteries inside so we can put experiments on the outer shell. Just rotate the batteries, there we go. Okay, perfect. That being said, we can place the solar panels. I'm gonna take, come on, four of them. There we go, place it a little bit more downwards. And now let's talk experiments. Oh, no, first, actually, communication. I do need a communitron because this uh, satellite will be remote controlled. Uh, scan set on top, yes, please. There we go, and then we will be placing two Mystery Goo containment units. Thank you. Then uh, we have the thermometers. I can put everything in double symmetry so it's a little bit more, you know, easier load balancing, I guess. Uh, Geiger counter, perfect. And I think it's so we are jam-packed. I did not place the Science Junior. 
because I want to keep it light. However, I'm thinking of... Uh, hold on just a second. I want to put these small tanks inside. Hmm, how will I do that? Uh, let's put like a pair of... Um, four of these, then the batteries below. Yeah, actually that looks cooler. Oh, wait, not three symmetry, four-way symmetry. There we go. So it looks like as if batteries are hooked up to solar panels. Yes, I love the aesthetic. And then we put small these tanks. I don't like clipping, but I guess it works. That's fine. And then we want to put the engines. I'm going to put these uh, linear RCS ports. I want to keep it small and tight and tidy. So, okay, after some fiddling, I think that's okay. Scan set on top, obviously. And I still need the, un I shouldn't be forgetting about the antenna. Uh, yes, communitron. There we go. One should suffice. And this is our satellite. This is what will be going into the orbit. So let's call it Science Satellite Mark 1. Now decoupler and let's build the rest of All the right. Room. This is the fairing and oh, it's too big for our Mothra fairing. Oh boy. Okay, let's place it like this. Is that better? Yeah, look at it. Go. I'm expecting that this will have enough Delta V to go and especially if we put in, you know, the standard Falcon 9 type E thing and we'll put in the Marlin engine and then we're gonna place this uh, four fins to keep it nice and stabilized. Check our staging and that should hopefully be it. And when I wanted to queue it up, I got failed editor checks. As you can see, we're over the part count limit, so I will need to make it my priority to upgrade the VAB, actually. Oh boy. Okay, so I have to reduce the part count. Well, there is some wiggle room there. We can get rid of this guy. Then we can uh, reduce the amount of batteries that I'm placing. So instead of four, I could be placing two, for example. Yeah. Hold on, let's check this out. I could place two tanks rather than four. They would even nicely fit two batteries, yes. Then replace these and... Um, and then we can need to basically bring our part count down. So some engine movage. All right, let's see how are we doing now. We are, okay, we are still over the power part count limit. Let's see if we add these two panels. So we have reduced the amount of panels by two. Right now we're on 29 parts. So we need to cut by one more part because yes, we do need to think about the, okay. I mean, I have the science experiments in symmetry, so I'm just gonna get rid of the symmetry and that should bring us well below the part count. There we go. Okay, this, this and that. Uh, Part count 28, I'm happy with it. Oh, I'm just gonna be scrapping that vessel. I'm gonna be building a new one, good. Oh, we have still an orbiter ca candidate being built. Okay, I'm gonna just place this one because we have an extra contract to test the 2.5 meter decoupler. So I'm gonna just place it down just for testing purposes. Which means, oh, I need to take care of the and rebuild the satellite, good. That being done, I think it's time that we launch the Orbiter Candidate. Yeah, and I thought initially I wouldn't do it, but or I would cut that part out, but I th thought that it would be really nice to show you guys how it went, and I was thinking to show highlights, but I think an accelerated version might be handier. We'll see what, end up, what ends up in the final video. It's undecided at the moment. And we go up, up and away, beautiful. I love the waterfall mod and how it looks with everything and as you can tell we are starting all the science experiments and Catherine Jenkins will be our pilot for today. She will be the second Kerbal that will be going into the orbit. Dorothy Bryan being the first one. Yes, beautiful. By the way, guys, as I said, I will be taking name applications for the pilots and everything. I already have a couple of them lined up. I think uh, Alex uh, and uh, Dan. Uh, Alex being one of the long time, you know, 
commenters and supporters of the channel and Dan being one of our patrons. So basically those uh, Dan is an engineer which means he will be going on an engineering mission uh, while probably Alex will be going on the next one. All right, uh, we have decoupled and we are going into the orbit. So we're just now making sure that we raise the apoapsis roughly to 100 kilometers and then we will be circularizing. Note that as of yet, uh, the upgrade of, I think, uh, didn't go yet through. So I'm not sure if I have the maneuver nodes yet. However, one important thing that Katrin will be performing today, which Dorothy couldn't because we never upgraded the astronaut facility, she will be the first Kerbal to perform an EVA, yes. So, selfies galore, exactly. All right. All right, that brings our apoapsis to 132. So we're just waiting until we come a little bit closer to the apoapsis and then we will be performing a circularization burn. Look at this beautiful view. All right. Okay, now that we are closer to the apoapsis, let's perform the circularization burn. Okay, a little bit too dark for my taste. There we go. Oh, uh oh. Grab it back, grab it back. If you report and. Uh, yeah, grab it back because I realized we don't have an astronaut suit. Whew. Now that's a cool screenshot for the episode. Although I, I, given that the main mission is a science set, I'm not sure if it will be taken for the... Yeah, how, titling the episode, how is it hanging? All right, so um, that being said, I am thinking that I should probably try out, uh, I mean, I do want that to start going to the moon sooner rather than later, so I'm just gonna try out how much Delta V we have, because apparently it's a lot. So 1300 meters per second gives us quite a lot of wiggle room. I wanted to raise our apoapsis, so I, I, I raise it incrementally in a couple of passes, so... Oh, we crossed the radiation belt. Okay, that's that contract complete. Perfect. Which means our Kerbal will be glowing in the dark. <laughs> Oopsie. <coughs> okay, and I'm thinking I'm still gonna be raising the apoapsis. I have no idea if we have enough Delta V to go to the moon or not. Probably we do, but we'll not be going to the moon today. We'll just see if we can reach the moon with our apoapsis and then come back. Oh, we can. Okay, well, then in this case, this was a little bit of a missed opportunity, to be honest. However, we will perform a swing by, but not probably get into the moon's sphere of influence, I guess. Alright, and now let's perform a deorbit burn. We'll put our periapsis somewhere around 30-ish. And this will make sure that we get back safely to the Kerbin. Beautiful comeback and... Awesome. There we go. Let's align ourselves and don't forget we still have some parachute testing contracts that I really want to be using utilizing this time 
because the whole purpose of this um, orbital candidate was to test the parachutes. If not, I will need be forced to make a separate hopper that will be testing them. And we're hitting the atmosphere, so let's just align ever so gently. We still have 536, so I'm actually gonna use the remaining fuel just to decelerate as quickly as possible. And then we're gonna detach. Maybe not the best idea to detach right now, but you know. Uh oh, let's detach it. Okay, now let's try and see if we can get those parachute contracts nailed down. Altitude wise, we are still too high. The first one would be the drogue chute test and followed by the radial mount parachute test. Okay, now we're at desired altitude, but we are still going a little bit too fast. Come on! Oh, I just missed it! Let's cut these and see if we can get the second one. Hit it! Oh, again missed it! Dang it! Alright, I guess it will have to be a separate test. And as the Catherine gently splashes into the ocean, we recover for all that important science. Yeah, gotten some science, perfect, thank you very much. And Catherine got some nice ribbons to show off and brag about friends. Splash down, G-Force, Mark III, speed, first EVA, etc, etc. Yes, we do have some more science to spend, so I was thinking I want to be checking out what I shall be which node of the research I shall be unlocking. Yeah, we have also experiment storage unit, which will be handy for storing all of our experiments and being able to perform more of them. Advanced flight control, that's definitely something that I'm considering. A lot of thruster blocks here. Aviation, um, not sure if we need it though. Yet we will. General construction, oh look, Grumford's bumper sticker. That might be handy. And advanced rocketry. I'm actually thinking that I'm gonna go for this one, guys. I'm first gonna research the basic aviation and then the advanced rocketry, I think. There we go, perfect. All right. And I think it's time that we, oh, let's warp to the science set while it rolls down to the launch pad and then we shall be hopefully launching our first satellite. All right, time to launch. Uh-oh, it's wonky due to the decoupler. Three, two, one, hit it. I really hope we did that contract. Something is pinging up there, so I'm hoping that we nailed the contract. As you can see, the rocket is very simplistic. It's very simple design, so should be fairly easy to get it into the orbit. And we have already proven that this version of like Falcon 9 or whatever it is has plenty of Delta V to get us up there. I just love how it's simplistic it looks. It's 
looks really basic, but it also looks a little bit realistic, don't you think? By the way guys, do let me know in the comments below, what is your style of building these rockets? Is it like completely over the top, over engineered, or is it like minimalistic, sleek, you know, modern looking rockets that would actually be able to fly out in real life? I'm really curious to know what your preferences are when it comes to building these rockets. Up, up and away we go, and I'm thinking that we're probably gonna be cutting some part of it until we get to the valid orbit. As you can see I'm gently releasing the throttle because I'm trying to keep my thrust weight around 1.8 because uh, if you go much faster it go becomes inefficient because you're combating the air a little bit too much. So yeah, I'm trying to, keeping, to keep it efficient as possible. By now we are already out of the most of the atmosphere so now I could actually put the thrust weight to whatever. However, this works. Okay, so we're just gonna let it coast a little bit up to the apoapsis, which will be happening in roughly 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Note that I have forgotten to put like the engineer. And uh, yes, to answer the question from Dan, Dan, yes I know we can make uh, the engineer to be partless, I just prefer because this keeps me on my toes. If I've forgotten it, I've forgotten it, then I have a problem of actually looking and uh, not having the complete information. There we go, beautiful, you know, fairing separation. Let's just activate our communitron and see, do we have some experiments that could be run? I forgot, to, uh, that's actually a lame excuse for me not running them to earlier. Okay, mystery go observation. Scan set. Perhaps, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so multispectral scan set. We're doing that now, apparently. All right, shall we see how it looks on the scan set interface? Do we have a big map or something? Let me check, oh, right. Yeah, apparently we are doing something. Let's see how it looks afterwards. Kicking the ignition because we are now close to the apoapsis and let's quickly circularize that orbit and we will be checking how just how far can this satellite go. Despite we are using this uh, launch vehicle similar to the Falcon 9, it's still not reusable because I haven't yet figured out a way to cram a probe core on it and then return it for the regular reuse scenario. I actually fully intend to do that in the future, so we'll see. Alright, we have ex expanded all the fuel and now let's engage the RCS fuel and see how it goes. Oh, I love this section. Just looks amazing, doesn't it? A little satellite that could. Very nice. Oh, this is a beautiful screeny. Awesome. Pure awesomeness. All right, so our, we are circularized, or circularized, it's actually highly elliptical orbit because we are 95 by 1 million meters, 1.5 million meters. And I'm thinking this is actually quite a nice uh, place to be having this satellite. So yeah, I just want to wait until it actually collects all the necessary science and sends it back to Earth. However, one thing that worries me is that the batteries are almost empty, shutting down all non-essential systems. Why? Is the actual scan set consuming that much? Hmm, 20 seconds of electric charge. Oh boy. Can we stop an experiment or something? 
Okay, uh, taking radiation damage, 46%. Can we actually increase the exposure or something? Uh-oh. Okay, now I've gotten some better sun exposure, so it was able to recharge itself, although ever so slightly. It, it varies between perpetual and nothing, so I, I'm guessing... Oh, it's the scan set is scanning. Look at this. Ah, it's cool. Okay, electric charge is a little bit slighter than zero, so I'm thinking I probably need to just disable the scan set. That very moment I have control, now I have a little bit of control, so... I should be probably disabling the scan set and then design a satellite that would have actually more oomph. Let's try and maximize, maximize sun exposure of the solar panel. Alright. Um. I'm gonna stop the scan set because I think it's drawing a little bit too much power. Let's see. Oh, and now as you can see, we're no longer losing that much. Okay, so vessel complete. Yeah, that we did. And contract complete, tested the coupler. Perfect. So overall, I'm pretty happy where we ended up today. So, and I think we're gonna wrap it up for this time. So uh, as always, thank you very much guys for watching. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.